Greetings ladies and gents. Today I'm going to go through how I finally learned how to dial in my math curve. Trust me, along the way there was an awful lot of mistakes, flat out boo-boos, and occasional out and out total screw up. But along the way I learned a few things and I'm going to show it all to you right now. If you've got any illusions about math curves being nice and stacked curves like a transistor gain curve, I'm going to definitely spell a few of those along the way too. I literally tinkered around with this for months. I'd make one change in one portion of a curve and seem to make things worse than another portion of a curve. After months of scratching my head trying to figure out what was going wrong and how come I couldn't make progress, I finally caught on to the fact that basically this thing is exactly what I was using back in the air conditioning industry. A hot wire anemometer was designed to measure velocities in an air conditioning system by inserting a hot wire probe into the ductwork or into the diffuser. Now the realization of course is that's exactly what a mass airflow sensor is and does. The second light was, hey, those anemometers have to be designed using some kind of fundamental principles and there's got to be some kind of equation out there that describes how they should work. And there is, and we're going to get to that shortly too. Most parts of the country are dealing with alcohol blends in your fuel I'm lucky here in South Carolina that uh, apparently there's virtually no alcohol in the fuels. I know that because I've got an old style muscle car with cork gaskets in the carburetor and I've never had a problem with the car. You want to data log both O2 sensors and the throttle position sensor. You want to make sure that the switching action on the O2 sensors looks good and the throttle position sensor has a nice smooth operation. And forget about being in a hurry. The more you hurry up, the more you're going to have to redo again. Trust me on this. Now on to the fuel pump and the fuel filter. Again, there is a separate fuel filter. It's right behind the tank. You definitely want to make sure you change that one if you haven't changed it lately. As far as the fuel pump goes, even if you're not modifying the engine extensively, you want to go ahead and pull the pump out of the tank and check your inlet sock on the pump. I found out mine was varnished so bad it would actually hold gasoline. Air filter wise, hopefully you're already running a K&N. If you're not, just make sure you got a new clean air filter in place. And don't forget to check that PCV valve. If that one's not working properly, it's going to cause you all kinds of problems with fuel mileage and trying to get your tune right. The next thing on the list is to check those emissions control systems. You want to make sure that they're either functioning correctly or they've been disconnected both in the computer and the physical sense. I'm lucky in SC in that they don't particularly care about emission controls and we don't have any inspections to make sure everything is working correctly. But if you work in an area where this is present, make sure you know what the laws are before you touch anything. Lastly, double check your base ignition timing. If it's not exactly 10 degrees before, then the computer calculations are going to be off and you're going to definitely have some problems with pinging or poor engine performance. All I'm going to say on this slide is all these folks make really good products. If you're just starting out, here's a good place to start. I highly recommend everything that I'm listing here. Okay, on standard math functions. You found that great one someplace that you downloaded that looks perfect. You're ready to drop it right in and drive off into the sunset. Forget about it. No matter where you got it, it's going to definitely need some work. What really surprised me is just how far off the stock curves were. Granted, the uh, curves you can get from some websites are a lot better than a stock curve is, but I found out that they were still pretty far off as well. Now, in fairness to uh, those downloaded curves, there may be a vehicle someplace they work perfect on, but your vehicle, almost certainly not. I'm also firmly convinced that math curves are just like foundations to the building. If you've got a bad foundation to the building, the structure of the building is compromised and you may lose the building. Much the same with an automobile and the math curve being off. The other quick lesson I learned is you may get a math curve nearly perfect, make a change in the vehicle, and find out you've got to retune the math curve again. Plan on it. Now for the book learning portion of the video. Relax. It's brief. I just want to make sure you know where I'm coming from. Here's how the math sensor works. Fundamental principles, anyway. Okay, nice fancy math mumbo jumbo, right? Well, how does this help me tune my car? Okay, hang on. I'm getting to that. 
Here's how we use King's Law to help tune a math curve. If you've never cared about or learned how to use Microsoft Excel, I'm going to make you love it now. Now, before I show you my spreadsheet, please note that I've rescaled my math curve just like this. Okay, this is my spreadsheet that I use to generate math curves. The A column is volts. The B column is the math curve that I'm currently working with. The C column is currently what's in the computer and running. It's listed here for comparison purposes. It's just entered numbers. Nothing's calculated in this column. The D column is the percent difference between the curve that I'm currently working on and the curve that's actually running in the computer. The E column is another curve currently under development. And the F column is percent difference just as it was before. The tuning constants are entered in the row 2 above. This is the only place in the spreadsheet you would enter data to make changes. Columns B, C, and D are the constants for A, B, and D for the first math curve, with columns E, F, and G being the A, B, and D constants for the second math curve. For example, here is how the formula figures into these calculations. Note that the top cell on the left math curve has the calculation in it. Note that the calculation directly below this one references the next lower voltage for calculation. Here's how my percent comparisons work. Note that in the fifth column we have a number 1033. In the sixth iteration column we have a number 1124. The 1124 number is 8.8 percent .8 higher than the 1033 number, as is the case being the 1148 number is 11.1 percent higher than the 1033 number. Obviously you could add more columns and compare math curves back to as far back as you wanted to on a percentage basis. This is how I see how my math curve is coming as far as changes go to preceding curves that I've tried that haven't worked out quite as well. Here's how the constants work and how you use the cams for data collection. I'm going to explain this a little bit better later on in the video, but just know here that crossing curves can actually be your friend when you're trying to tune a math curve. Just to make my life easier, I'm going to refer to a KAMRF as a cam. The cams are a way of the computer looking at what just occurred in the combustion process and then comparing it with what it thought it was going to get in the combustion process and then making adjustments and remembering what those adjustments are. In order to draw any curve, you need at least three points. If you're lucky enough to have a cam that is one or nearly equal to one at a point on your curve you're using for data in your data log, you're in luck. It makes curve tuning a whole lot easier. In order to generate a math curve using my spreadsheet, these are the minimum things I think you need to data log. Here are the things I'm looking for when I'm looking for points to generate a data log using my spreadsheet. I've generally found it's a good idea to purge the cams before you begin a new data log. This makes sure that there's no bad data stored in the cams that might affect your data log results. This is the initial math sensor transfer function that I started out with. It's from EFIDynoTuning.com. Link is in the description. This is my complete evolutionary sequence in math curves up till present, which is uh, curve number 7. This is all the data that I pulled off a data log after running curve number 5. This data was used to generate curve number 6. I picked this math curve to show you what I meant about crossing curves. Note that two places on the curve the cam goes to 1. It's in the middle that the cam is off. Think of this as like a 12 foot long board with supports 3 foot in from each end. If you stand in the middle, the middle goes down and the ends come up. If you raise up the middle, then the two ends go down. Using these numbers derived from a test 5 data log, that means that my test 6 curve is going to do the same thing. That means if I lean out the curve in the middle, then the two ends are going to richen up. Any data you might obtain from any preceding data logs prior to the math curve that you're working on is invalid for making any adjustments. This is a partial data log with the um, car on cruise control at 59 and a half miles per hour. This slide allows you to see the scaling of the cam 
at its highest point in the data log. And this slide allows you to see low cam scaling at its lowest point. This data log is of the engine under mild acceleration. Please note where the cursor line is and what the value of the cam is at that line. And yes, I did check. The computer was definitely operating in closed loop at this portion of the data log. That's the basics. I welcome any comments, especially from you pro tuners. Just leave them in the comment lines down below. I believe I've covered things pretty well. If I miss something or something is confusing, just let me know in the comments. I'll be glad to do a follow-up video or see if I can answer a basic question in the comment files. Well, if you like what you're seeing, uh, give me a like and consider subscribing. I just might have something else coming down here real soon you're going to want to take a look at. You see, your engineer's got a lot more tricks up his sleeve, so y'all come on back and see me soon.